Okay, now switching over to castor bean. Castor bean is one that is extremely toxic, uh, one that can be a real major problem for us. Uh, castor bean is a large woody annual uh, for us, and now in the, in the tropics it may be more of a perennial. Uh, very distinctive uh, uh, leaves here that may be very, very large in size. Uh, they're palmately lobed. Uh, they also have uh, gland-tipped teeth at the end, so they're kind of uh, uh, scratchy as well. The seeds, uh, the seeds will be three per capsule, and they're very distinctive. They look like a uh, tick, a dog tick of some sort. Uh, very common uh, description of, of those seeds. Now this is grown as an ornamental throughout the south. It's been grown for many, many years, uh, and so many of these plants have actually escaped into some of the um, uh, ditches and, and uh, old home sites and that sort of thing. And it's primarily grown as a mold repellent. It's a fairly effective mold repellent, uh, but it's also uh, very toxic uh, for other things as well. The toxin involved here is ricin. Uh, it inhibits protein synthesis, and this is one that uh, just a little bit can kill uh, not only uh, humans but also uh, uh, animals as well. All plant parts are toxic, especially the seeds. That is a it may only take just uh, three to four seeds uh, to kill uh, a livestock um, and because of the uh, uh, low uh, lethal dose requirement for this particular uh, toxin. This toxicity is generally seen uh, most often in the spring and in the summer. Um, and uh, this, is a, this is a chemistry that actually has been used in, in chemical warfare uh, as well. It's a very, very potent toxin. Um, in fact, uh, the uh, four men from North Georgia back in uh, last year that were arrested for a plot to, uh, uh, to kill some officials were actually refining ricin to use that in their, uh, their attacks. The animals that are affected, typically we're going to be dealing with uh, uh, the horses and the monogastrics, uh, particularly hogs, uh, very susceptible to poisoning, but all livestock are going to be susceptible to this as well. And usually it's just by chance that they get some of those seeds into their diet. They're not usually going out and picking at this on purpose. Depending on the amount consumed, uh, signs may take uh, just a few hours or a few days to, uh, to begin to start showing up. Uh, it starts with very violent purgation, uh, trying to uh, get rid of that toxin, straining and bloody diarrhea as a result of it. Uh, abdominal pain, weakness and trembling, a lack of coordination, just the general uh, problems that would result as a result of the uh, toxin being in the system and then ultimately uh, the animals would die. Uh, the key here in treatment would be to uh, uh, administer large amounts of intestinal protectants at a time. Uh, try to keep the animals hydrated with IV fluid, fluids as well uh, and just do your best to try to carry them through. This is a uh, one that is very hard to purge from the system. Next one on the list is China Berry. China Berry is one that's very common in, in the coastal plain region of the, of, the, of the state. It's a small to medium sized tree, uh, very distinctive looking tree. Uh, these uh, uh, bipinnately uh, compound uh, leaves are very common. Uh, it's the fruit really oftentimes that uh, seems to be a real problem for uh, animals as well. Uh, it's fairly rare in, in more northern areas of the south, but uh, from uh, the southern Piedmont on down through the coastal plain will see quite a bit of china berry, especially growing along the roadsides and in fence rows. It was actually once grown as an ornamental fairly widely, uh, but it has escaped and become uh, fairly invasive as well. The toxicity in this particular case is a whole suite of toxins, uh, primarily some neurotoxins and some unidentified resins that are also causing issues. Uh, the fruits are the most toxic part of the tree and that's generally what is consumed and post-mortems they'll find those, uh, those fruit capsules or the fruit themselves in the uh, animal's rumen or in their gastrointestinal tract. Uh, but even the leaves, bark, and flowers are, are, can be toxic, although typically those are not going to be consumed uh, in a proportion large enough to cause an issue. Uh, most poisonings are going to occur in the fall or winter when those uh, uh, berries are there and they begin to ripen. And, uh, the, uh, the livestock would go after them. Uh, sweet, uh, swine and uh, sheep are typically the ones that are going to be most affected by this, uh, picking this up off the ground oftentimes even. And uh, uh, toxicity may occur after consuming about a half a percent of body weight. So 
Uh, we're talking about a, a pretty substantial amount, but again, it may uh, accumulate. The uh, goats, poultry, and cattle can also be poisoned, but in those cases, oftentimes it's going to require a larger amount to really ha co cause a major problem. Uh, stomach irritation, vomiting, uh, bloody diarrhea, paralysis, irregular breathing, and respiratory distress, just general symptoms uh, that would result as a, re uh, as a side effect of this toxin. The way we treat it, uh, specific gastrointestinal protectants here, uh, providing some stimulants, and even, even caffeine in this case, to, uh, uh, to stimulate the response and, and uh, break them out of that lethargic uh, feeling that they have. Cockleburr, this is one that actually I had a problem with this morning. Uh, Cockleburr in uh, uh, some corn silage in this particular case. Uh, description of this particular one, this is a very common, uh, uh, heavily branched annual weed, generally one to three uh, feet tall, uh, very broad uh, leaves as well, very distinctive leaves. Um, and obviously the, the burr itself is very distinctive and uh, everyone that's been around in the south has probably at one or time or another uh, run into one of these burrs and get them into their pants or, or uh, in, in their dog's fur or something like that. So they're very abundant throughout the southeast, uh, especially in fertile areas. Uh, you'll see them in fields, along the roadsides, uh, anywhere that you have full sunlight you can, you can have this uh, be an issue. The toxin involved in this particular case is, uh, is another glycoside. Uh, in this particular case, uh, it's going to be more concentrated in the seeds and in the seedlings, and that's typically where the poisoning is going to occur, is in the seedling stage, uh, particularly for swine or other uh, uh, animals that may be uh, uh, consuming the small seedling stage of this uh, particular plant. Uh, mature plants are pretty distasteful, and the animals generally will, will try to avoid them unless they're not giving them a choice, like in a case where it's in the silage. Uh, typically what we see in terms of uh, uh, the livestock species that are more problematic, as I mentioned, swine are going to be more commonly po uh, poisoned uh, as they root up those uh, smaller, uh, younger seedlings. Uh, chickens and other livestock have also been poisoned, but it's uh, a little bit less likely uh, that they're going to be consuming the more potent parts of the plant. Some of the signs of issues here, vomiting, gastrointestinal uh, irritation, uh, sometimes with diarrhea as well. Uh, generally, they're going to have a lot of convulsions and spasmodic, they're going to be very nervous and, and uh, uh, just uh, having a lot of convulsions and, and movement. Uh, as a treatment, uh, there's uh, really nothing that can be done once the signs uh, have been observed. But it can be neutralized to some degree by using uh, an oil or fat of some sort uh, and, and also activated charcoal uh, that can absorb that toxin and kind of uh, take in some of that material. 